Hello, and welcome to Move or Improve with Debbie. Thanks for joining me today. I'm privileged to welcome Hal Logsdon, and he is an associate broker in real estate in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And he's going to talk to us today about the pleasures of retiring and living in New Mexico. And this will be a regular program every month. The difference is it will be living in a different part of the country to enjoy life and retirement someplace else other than where you live. So welcome to the show, Hal. I'm so glad you could join me today. Thank you, Debbie. It's wonderful to be with you. And I hope the weather is wonderful there in New Mexico today. It's uh, it's just cleared up. It's nice and sunny. Oh, that's great. Well, tell me, I know you've been in New Mexico for a while now. And tell me and the listeners, what do you like best about living in Santa Fe in particular, but New Mexico in general? Uh, there's so many things I like about it, but I think most of all, I like the community. Uh, Santa Fe is a small city. I think the population is about 83,000, but there's a great number of interesting people here, and I find it very friendly with many opportunities to connect with people. Uh, when I first made my uh, when, when I made my first visit to Santa Fe in 1992, I think it was, I think it was 29, uh, I was just completely taken and mesmerized with with Santa Fe, and asked myself why it took me so long to to come to this unique place. Uh, and after several mu- several visits here, I told myself, you know, one day I'm going to live here. And lo and behold, here I am. And I think I pinch myself every day that I actually live here and that, that that dream came true. Well, it's a wonderful city. I was so pleased to visit there few months ago and I just fell in love and I knew like you I knew I would love Santa Fe and it's just a charming town and so much to do and I like the walkability of it too but to tell the listeners what you like best about living in New Mexico itself you know I have to say it's the uh, it's the climate uh, it's a dry climate here I was I've always lived in fairly humid uh, environments um, but I, I think it's definitely the climate and the, there's a natural light here that is very, uh, I'd have to say, nourishing. Uh, I think I can relate to Georgia O'Keefe, who came here from New York on her very first visit. I think she's quoted as saying that uh, when she came to Santa Fe, or excuse me, when she came to New Mexico, that she found her soul. And that's why she ended up relocating here because that that natural light here. Hello. I think we've lost him. Uh oh, crap. Ugh. Um, what should I do? I guess I should call. Him. Hello. We're oh, back. there you are. Okay, well, you're back. What happened to you? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, this is creepy. Okay, it's that all that light in New Mexico. <laughs> All right, let's let's, uh, Joe, let's let's start again at the what do you like best about living in New Mexico oh, section, and okay. we'll so just uh, I'll ask the question again uh, and count us down, Joe. Going in three, two, one. So, how what do you like best about living in New Mexico itself, the state? You know, Debbie, I would have to say it's the climate. Uh, the climate and the natural light here. It's a dry climate, and having lived in humid parts of the country, you know, most of my life, I really prefer a drier climate. Um, the light itself is the only way I can really describe it is the this natural light that we have here is is what I would say nourishing. Uh, it just really enhances your mood and or I know it enhances mine every day if if we have a sunny day which we do you know over 300 days a year uh, you know I always think about Georgia O'Keefe and her quote that on her very first visit to New Mexico I believe it was in the 1930s 
uh, when she came here from New York, uh, that she said that she found her soul. And I think that that the, the natural light that we have here allowed her to, as an artist, to flourish. And uh, of course, the rest is history. We all know her uh, her fantastic work. Uh, we have a museum here that 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 uh, dedicated to her, as well as uh, many other places around the state. Uh, and also, I think it's the wide open spaces here. <clears throat> I think that lends itself to. Um, to really kind of open the opening the creative mind. Interesting. Okay. That, yeah, I enjoyed the George O'Keefe museum and, um, I want to get back there to go to Taos and see her, uh, place there that she has. And, uh, it, it's just such a different lo area from what I'm used to. I really enjoyed it. Uh, what about the weather though? I mean, how many days of sun does it get as hot as Arizona with 119 degrees or what are the average? Oh, temperature? no, 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 no. Uh, we're kind of a mount, more of a mountain state I, in Santa Fe in particular uh, is 7,000 feet above sea level. So uh, we never get scorching hot like you do in Phoenix. Uh, we do have uh, over 300 days of, of sun here, which I love, and that's just one of the draws for me. Um, we do have four distinct seasons, and of course, we do have a winter, a real winter, and we often do get snow. Um, as I mentioned, we're 7,000 feet above sea level, and uh, we, we do have a ski area uh, about 20 minutes from here, which is 10,000 feet above sea level. So there is, I think this year we're getting upwards to 140 inches uh, up in the mountains and the ski areas. So we have a very, very active ski season this year. Great. Last year, last year wasn't, wasn't, we didn't have much snow, so we didn't have such a great year for skiers, but this year is just, uh, it's, it's, it's go, going gangbusters for the skiers. Uh, and they're all, they're all in town. <laughs> Well, what about how hot does it get? When does it, what months, is it one month, two months of heat or what? Well, oddly or surprisingly for a lot of people, June is our hottest month. Okay. Um, we do get into the 90s most of June throughout the day, but the nights get really nice and cool and pleasant. There are a lot of people here that live here that still don't have air conditioning. Because there's there's only maybe six weeks of the year where people feel that they need it. They keep their windows open at night. It cools off the house. They close it up during the day, and uh, it's it's quite manageable. Uh, August is our can actually be quite pleasant weather wise. It's um, uh, it does cool off a little bit in August, and a lot of our days are in the 80s. So August is the busiest tourist month here. Uh, one, because of the weather, and two, is because we just have a lot going on, like Indian Market. So we have a great number of visitors from Arizona, Texas, Florida, who come here in August to get out of their heat. Wow. Interesting. So they come as far away as Florida. That's interesting. Oh, well, yeah. What can you mention about the Indian Market? That sounds intriguing. Oh, the Indian Market is, is huge. Uh, I... Th if I remember correctly, I think we they say that it brings in upward to a hundred thousand people uh, into the into our area. Which, of course, we don't have nearly the accommodations for that. But people stay in various places like Taos or Albuquerque uh, or surrounding areas to um, to visit the Indian Market. But it it is quite an event, and it's just a a, a great display and downtown of the the Indian uh, art and those artists will come from all over the place uh, to uh, to participate in that event interesting very it's much the, it's our busiest week of the year and so it's just one week in August yes and various tribes of uh, various Indian tribes participate or is it one or two or no one? it's 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 everyone you can imagine I couldn't name them all 
that's amazing. I one thing I enjoyed about the my trip to uh, New Mexico was learning more about the Indians um, out there, and it's it was very interesting as to how they developed the area and what has happened to them since. But and I I believe Debbie, you visited a pueblo, didn't you? Yes. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. So every you time, got you yeah, got time, to uh, see a, one of their ceremonies. Yeah. Oh yes. Um, I, every time I go out to either, well, New Mexico or uh, Arizona or wherever, I always like to visit the Indian reservations to learn more about that particular tribe. And I just find, I've always been fascinated with um, the Indian culture and the Indian lifestyle, and I always like to learn about it. And it's always fascinating to me um, what goes on at these particular locations and all the rich cultural history that they have. So, yeah. And how they pass those traditions down from yes. generations. Yes, and they keep doing it regardless of what the restrictions are on their lives and their lifestyle. So I think right. it's wonderful. It's wonder, a great deal of respect for them. But let's uh, let the listeners know, what what's the cost of living like there? Is it pretty good, pretty realistic? What is, what's it like? Well, I think that has... Uh, depends on where you come from in terms of relocating. Uh, Mm -hmm. I would say it's considered uh, anywhere from moderate to probably maybe a bit high for some, for some depending upon what part of the country you've come from. If you're coming from a high cost urban area, I think you'll find it uh, very reasonable. If you're coming from uh, maybe a smaller town or a, a state like uh, I don't know Louisiana or, um, or or South Carolina, you might find it a bit higher. Mhm, mhm. But it's still not unaffordable. It sounds. No, like. I would I would say no. I what find about, it. Yeah. What about like medical facilities? I always tell people to be sure that they can get to a hospital easily and that the hospital is not in danger of shutting down. I know a lot of rural areas have uh, facilities that are closing down just because they can't afford to stay open. And I'm sure Santa Fe has enough population to be able to um, support good hospitals and doctors and that sort of thing. So talk to uh, people about that. Uh, We do. We have, uh, we used to have just one major medical facility and that was uh, Christus St. Vincent. But now we have two uh, Presbyterian health care services came in last year, built a major facility here. So now people have the option of, of choosing between the two of those. Uh, I th- the Presbyterian, which of course is brand new, is considered state of the art. Uh, but St. Christus St. Vincent's has just uh, a major presence here. So we're fortunate now that we have both. And I think competition is always a good thing, uh, particularly in healthcare. Oh, for sure. Uh, Having good quality uh, medical care is very important as well. Yes. Now, if you needed something highly specialized, like a heart surgery or something like that, uh, many of the specialists are found in Albuquerque. So people will go there for uh, for major procedures. Um, Albuquerque is about 60 miles south of, of Santa Fe. Oh, okay, great. Now, what about... You know, the walkability, ease of getting around, transportation, you know, parking, all that kind of stuff, you know, because people like to bring their cars, but they may not need to rely on a car as much. Right. Well, you mentioned that when you were here, you found it to be a very walkable city. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can I, I concur with that. Uh, but most people that live here do have cars and unless they live downtown. Uh, some don't. And they just walk to everything or they bike or take public transportation we do have a very good uh bus system dedicated just to seniors oh good i i i believe it's free i don't think it has i don't think you have to pay for it so a lot of seniors who